Uh, right, so uh, as I said, uh, I had a vision uh, when I was uh, 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 praying uh, one day, and in this vision, I saw uh, something uh, which we all been through, actually, all of you who's here been through in this season, because what I saw in this vision, I saw children were sitting in the school bench. And if you were in the school, maybe, uh, I don't know what age you would start school, school maybe six, seven, I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, I saw uh, about that uh, age of, of children uh, uh, in the school bench. And as I saw them, I, I, I saw them as they were focusing, listening, they had their notes and uh, they were about to study and write down what the teacher was telling them. So I have this vision and uh, as I have this vision, uh, the Lord is uh, in this time, I don't know if it's happened to you, didn't really speak to me, but downloaded something to my mind, to my spirit and downloaded me uh, 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 like, like a, a small teachings about this vision, which I'm going to share with you. And when I have this vision, this is what the Lord uh, showed me. The Lord suddenly downloaded me information and reminded me how much we've been uh, socialized, programmed to be able to teach, which is a great thing because uh, if when you're born uh, as a baby, you already uh, doing uh, uh, automatically that that you know you're crying uh, for air uh, you 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 you're crying for food and and uh, so you have all these things coming to you and and as you're born you're going through a learning process you're learning how to walk you're learning how to fall you're learning oh this is hot this is cold this is sweet uh, and uh, I'm sure you you maybe did with your child uh, to give him lemon to taste and then just you were just watching the face you may you maybe recorded uh, the face I'm sure you did it don't don't be too sent for now uh, so and the child learned that okay so that that's kind of the taste which is make my face funny and you know so we're learning. And this learning process actually is a blessing from God because in this way we more we educating ourselves to be ready for the life, to be ready for for the kingdom. So learning process as we going through, we we uh, do so many philosopher uh, philosopher thinking, uh, right? Oseb uh, Osemuden, and this is a very great things because as we thinking, we analyzing things, mm -hmm. sharpening ourselves. So uh, you are a thinker, which is a very great uh, skill, you know, to think and meditate on things that that's a great skill actually uh, so but this is all in us and we have been created by God like this so God is created us uh, like now that's what uh, artificial intelligence try to uh, copy uh, to be able to learn new things because right now uh, my computer doesn't uh, doesn't learn anything unless I'm typing something in. But what what uh, people aiming now the scientists uh, people to create something which could be similar to us. And what what is that similarity? The similarity would be that they would have that skill we, uh, we, what we've been blessed by God to be able to learn. Because learning, it be able to learn is a blessing from God. And that's what uh, the scientists try to do uh, uh, with, with uh, with uh, now, nowadays technology and they doing well of course uh, but you know they still cannot understand how is our brain able to learn certain things for example i just see your face and i will know your name i just i don't know i'm just reading something so for example taivo was reading that book and we still remember the 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 title of the book and and what is the book about so we learn something and we processed and 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 is here in our short time memory right now so this is a blessing this is how god built us 
This is this is a, absolutely a blessing, and more we learning, more we growing. Now, let's go to the scripture, one Corinthians, eight, uh, verse one, and the B part of the one. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. It's a powerful scripture. So uh, just to have knowledge without love, uh, it make you proud, it you puffs you up. But knowledge and love together combined is a powerful tool in the in the in the hand of God. So. Um, as I said, I have this vision that we are programmed, we are so socialized to be able to learn for since childhood. We've been taught how to focus, how to, how to read a book to remember, how to understand mathematics. We, we, we are in the learning, we were in the learning process. Now in this vision, when I had this vision, uh, the Holy Spirit started to speak to me and said God at the enemy Satan saw this gift inside us and as he saw this gift inside us again this is from vision from the Holy Spirit that I'm sharing with you when I have this vision and I heard the Satan was studying us and saw that we have a great skill to learn for new things and I saw how Satan went and made a meeting with the demons and said, we can abuse them like this. We can abuse them to their gift because the gift is inside that we can learn. So Satan started to abuse this gift and find out because we, we naturally are learners. He find out if he start to teach us, if he start to discipling us, we're going to be actually studying by nature if we are not discerning that this is not God this is not good knowledge this is an evil knowledge looking good uh, in, in, a, in a, uh, a shape of light then we're going to study doesn't matter he give it to us so without discerning without filtering we actually study everything we eating everything and um, and as I have this vision uh, and understood that uh, Satan is attacking our very gift that we are able to learn. And he is, uh, in this age, he is one of the teacher and the demons are kind of uh, uh, his prophets who's teaching us, who's educating us, I was like, oh my God, is, is this really happening? And now the Lord brought me scriptures and, and gave me scenarios how the enemy is discipling us. And yes, you heard me, the enemy is teaching us, discipling us. He's sitting in a chair of the teachers and he's trying to educate us to his uh, according to his kingdom that was my vision now if you come to me to the book of act uh 1721 this is what he says for all the the antiochians and strangers which were there spend their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. This is from the book of Acts. And Paul, uh, Luke give us a, a statement which says the people in that town were always busy to tell or to hear something new. Something new. And verse 22 said, then Paul uh, stood in the midst uh, of Mars Hill and said, Men of Athens, I see that you are very religious in all respect. The Hungarian version says you're really looking, uh, to, looking for God. You really, really try to, to see who God is. So, and when Paul said, he continues because said, for as I went around and observed closely your object of worship, I found an altar which, which says, 
to an unknown god. So they had an altar which said to an unknown god. And post goes on, and therefore what you're worshipping without knowing it, this is who I'm going to teach about you. So what, what we can see here, we can see something in the book of Act. We see this great skill that uh, we want to learn, we want to hear new things, uh, is actually uh, being uh, abused by the enemy. Because what happened, they, they, all the day they were busy to talk about something new or hear something new. They were hungry for news. They were hungry for information. All as they were satisfied if they would have something new to talk about or hear something new to talk about. So, and can I tell you today we are suffering exactly in the same problem because if you don't hear anything new, if you don't see anything new, you get bored. That's why you you you're struggling with your Bible because you read already your Bible and you know exactly after uh, 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 Matthew twenty four uh, what will be the next chapter. You you can maybe even uh, saying without reading it because you read your Bible so many times and you think okay it's nothing new in it. Let me just grab something else because because we are hungry for new. We are hungry for new. Why? We are hungry for new because uh, there, there are so many scientists, psychologists, they, they made some experiment. As they did an experiment, they, they made a study out of the experiment and they find out anytime when, when we are learning something new or we hearing something new or we have new information that's actually uh, they find out in our mind our brain is starting to uh, create they called dopamine and dopamine is uh, uh, is a is a thing which make you happy which which uh, give you like like that uh, um, interesting feeling that you you feel like i'm in a life now you, your mood is changing so that's dopamine anytime dopamine coming to your mind you feel good uh, uh, anytime uh, uh, the uh, the brain is creating dopamine uh, then you suddenly not feeling boring you suddenly not feel tired your eyes is just opening up you're, you're you're starting to smile you feel satisfaction that's what dopamine does with us when the brain is creating this uh in our mind that's when, when you go for dating with a new person uh then uh on that period, in the dating period, uh, your brain is continually uh, uh, giving you dopamine. That's why sometimes you're shaking, even you're asking a question from your uh, future wife or husband, and as you're asking, you're almost smiling, didn't even hear the answer, because dopamine is present. And anytime you have new things in your life, uh, so, so the, the scientists find out the brain is starting to uh, bring uh, and create dopamine. And this is actually addictive because, because uh, when we have uh, this uh, in our mind, in our flesh, this uh, dopamine, then we feel good, we feel uh, 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 like happy. Now, we find out and they find out when you try to learn something new, when you have new information, when you meet somebody, new people, and then, or you're just reading a new book, you already have these feelings and you're enjoying. This makes you satisfied. This makes you happy. Now, the problem is the people here in Antioch, in the book of Act, they were addictive to this uh, experiment, uh, this, this uh, uh, experience. When they don't have new things, they miss dopamine, so they were looking for so much. And they, they didn't even care what was that, they just wanted to hear something new. They were not respected Apostle Paul, but because he was 
take, take, uh, be speaking something new, they said, let, let me just hear you. Even though they were not believing what he said in the first stage, they, they, were, they were watching him as a stranger, but because he said something new, they brought in and they said, let me just listen to you. So the enemy studied us. And the enemy knew if there is something new on the table, we're going to watch. That's why when gossip starting with the new information, everybody is watching. Everybody is quiet and focusing because it's new gossip. If you knew the gossip, you already, yeah, I know that. And you, your focus is not there. But if it's new, you're 100% there. Mm -hmm. I mean, not you, of course, because you're Christian and you rebuke that demon and then you just go to pray. But I'm saying those weak Christian, you know, who is not present. So, uh, uh, and Satan started to study us and he said in this vision I saw he was saying let me use this uh, curiosity against them let me let me load them with new information let me load them with new experiences because in this way they going to study but they going to study me not God why do you think people are divorcing? Why do you think, think people cheating on each other? Why do you think you're selling your car even though it's good? Why do you think you're selling your phone even though it's, it's almost the latest? Why do you think you're buying the new software even though what you have is, is still good? Because you're curious so how is that how, how that new things will work? When you're boring with your husband, you know, you're seeing your husband face. Yes, I know. You, you know, when your husband taking off the shirt, you, you know already what you're going to see, that muscly or fatty body. God, I don't know. In Andrea's case, of course, muscly. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I am rebuke all the hamburger, all the chips, all the calories. Uh, so, so, and, and, <laughs> What I'm trying to say, because uh, in relationships, for example, in marriage, after 20 years, you don't have new experience. You're getting so excited when you can see at least something on the television, which is new for you. You're going to see the same, same, same things, a body, but at least won't be what you already knew. And that whether you like it or not, and no, ma no matter if you are Christian or not, your brain going to create dopamine. Can you hear me? It doesn't matter how big Christian you are. Doesn't matter if you fast it. Doesn't. I'm talking about something as which is which which born with you. Iniquity is in our blood. You cannot control your brain when you see some things that your brain not give you that dopamine and I, I can tell you why is the problem because when job was watching a young woman probably this dopamine started to generate feelings in him so now job says in the book of job i made a covenant with my eyes and i'm not watching anymore uh, uh, a young woman do you know the scripture right uh, so, but why Job did this? Because Job realized the only thing I can make covenant is my eye. Because if I'm not blocking my eyes, then my brain is going to create dopamine. Of course, he didn't know the words because on that time, there were no scientists uh, who, do, who does experiments. I'm talking about real experiments. I'm talking about scientists who were studying people. Who, were went, who went to college, went to university, and they were studying. And this is not what they think, this, these are facts. They studied and they were able to see the brain activity. Then anytime you watch something new, even though it is not holy, if you see a naked woman, your brain started to work. So the only things you can avoid, not to watch. Or the only things you can avoid, go and rebuke and go against with the word of God. 
right? But you need something spiritual to stop it. So, when you have 20 years marriage in, 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 uh, uh, and you have your husband or your wife, you suddenly not that excited as the first time. Why? Because nothing new. And because of nothing new, and if you are addicted to dopamine, addicted to have new things in your life, you're going to find someone else. If you are learning to discipline yourself, you will say, I don't need new experience. I don't need dopamine because that's what the science is saying. Clearly, that's a chemical uh, things in your brain because I don't need, I'm going to discipline and I'm going to just uh, uh, live as I am. But the fact is our brain is shouting for new things. Now, these people in the book of Acts, uh, they were Greek and they were about to find out something new, to find out something new. Now, I told you what happening in the physical, like what scientists, uh, people saying. I told you that your brain is uh, giving you dopamine and, and as you're watching, as you as you running after the new things, that's what you're experiencing. Now, let me tell you what happening in the spirit. In the spiritual realm, when you always running after new things and not filtering it and without filtering and you just taking everything in which is new what happening in the spirit in the spiritual realm actually you're making an altar and this altar called to an unknown god in another way to a new things which I didn't know before, but I'm interested about it. Why? Because Paul said, and he was disturbed in his spirit. Paul said, you people are, because you always want to hear new, actually you created an altar. And this altar has a name, the altar of unknown God. Because anything which, which you don't know, but you idolize is coming to your God. And information, new information can become your idol. New information, uh, wishing the new things, the new experience can become your God. That's why people are ready to pay and nothing wrong with that. That's why people are not ready to pay so many, so many much, uh, so, so many money. To, to try something new, you know, like, uh, let me try uh, 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 jumping out from a plane, let me try uh, bungee jumping, whatever, new things, because you, you become excited. But in the spirit, when you are eating everything, and I'm thinking here, for example, for now, which I saw in this vision social media, so when you're scrolling your phone, and one video coming another and another video and then other news on the social media and then other news and somebody so as you're scrolling actually you're feeding yourself and as you're feeding yourself with new information and you're not filtering because suddenly uh, uh, a picture came up but you don't want to see so you're quickly just scrolling it uh, or something coming up which is, for example, connected to witchcraft and you just, oh, this is unholy, let me just scroll it and you you suddenly see Apostle Peter Instagram page and you, you feel like, ah, oh, yeah, this is good, let me just read this. And you're scrolling, but after Apostle Peter uh, 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 anointed picture, you suddenly see a naked woman and you, you are troubled now. So you again scrolling quickly. Now, you see another picture and maybe you see another post uh, which says oh the holy spirit is so good and then you want you you're doing it again and suddenly you see somebody saying oh satan is powerful or anything the thing i want to say you cannot filter even though you're trying to filter your scrolling you cannot filter and unfortunately, we're spending so much time on social media, we're spending so much time uh, with our phone 
and this phone is actually educating us but not the phone is educating us but but somebody behind the phone and i saw this somebody on this vision i saw children were sitting in the bench and i saw satan was abusing because the children's people build uh, we have built in interest to learn new things and this is good but Satan was abusing and using this gift in us and said, okay, you want to learn new things, let me give you new things. So through your phone, so many new information coming and this information is affecting and feeding us. Feeding us. So Satan became, became a chef. He became a chef who's continuously try to feed us, giving us food, giving us uh, information, giving us new things. And I'm not going to lie, we enjoying so much to see new things. But if you are just eating the new things, you're not filtering actually, uh, oh, this is good, this is not, you're just scrolling and you cannot set your phone properly to to give you the right information you had to actually watch and analyze all the things what you see because you have to analyze you you you're seeing a picture you have to analyze this is this is wrong this is disgusting so you do this oh yeah this is good you you do this this is kind of okay but you each picture each momentum you have to judge right when you do your phone, you, you're doing hundreds and hundreds judgment in your mind. Because you're judging according what you see. You're judging this is good, this is acceptable, this is disgusting, this is, uh, it's okay, but I wouldn't recommend to others. This I can watch now because I'm alone, but if somebody would be here, I would just quickly do this. That's what we're doing, right? So now, everybody who has to judge something, you have to spend time and look at it. And as you're spending time and look at it, it's entering to your mind. You cannot make judgment if that very thing is not entering to your mind. You cannot judge at something what you're not letting in. I, I mean that, for example, when people went to Jesus and said, do we have to pay tax? So Jesus let that information in his mind. In his mind, he made a decision and now he's speaking. Any, any, any single decision you make, uh, uh, this is more for us because we, we, are, we are doing deep philosophy right now, right? Any single decision we make, we have to think first on it. You can't judge something. Jesus said you have to judge everything. So you have to think on it first. It's entering to your mind. Now the problem is when you scroll on your phone uh, and you see, for example, let's say on average 100 videos, on average day, about from, from the 100 video, maybe 20 is disgusting or maybe just one. But even that one, for you to be able to judge, you have to let that information to your mind. And now, what you, what you were watching is not anymore on your phone, it's in your mind. Now, that information went to your mind. Now you go to sleep. But the information is still there. And you, you're waking up and you're rebuking Satan because because now you had a bad dream or or suddenly you just feel uh, uh, you know something just happening to you and you just feel oh i feel i should punch this person why because you were watching a video when people were, were fighting i feel like i just i feel unfair i feel like i want to stole that things why because you're watching people who were 100 times richer than you and you were analyzing and thinking i would deserve more as well so what i'm trying to say 
in this vision i saw that we are like a children sitting in a bench and we are receiving information but not from god from satan through social media through news and if we are not going to stop this we're going to be educated by them uh, that was the first vision now after this vision i have immediately a second one i went from vision to vision in this second vision the holy spirit told me look how the enemy is copy what he saw in heaven because the enemy I saw the enemy that in a spirit he was standing and he had a book in his hand. And as he has a book in his hand, I saw he was about to feed us with that book and said, eat it. And as I have this vision, when the enemy has a book and he, the enemy wanted us to eat that book, uh, I, I also noticed that the enemy knew that when we're going to eat in our mouth going to be like honey and in our stomach is going to be bitter that was the vision now immediately i went to the book of revelation book of revelation 10 8 to 9 says exactly this what i saw in this vision but this was done by God and the, the angel of God. In this uh, scripture, the Bible said, now the voice uh, which I heard from heaven, heard again speaking to me and saying, go take the book, the scroll, which is open. And the angel was uh, holding that book. So I went to that angel and the angel gave it to me. So I took and I ate and it uh, made my uh, stomach bitter but in my mouth it was sweet like honey and the next scripture says uh, now the angel is directing John to prophesy to speak and what we see here it's a spiritual principle uh, what is the spiritual principle what we see here the spiritual principle, anything you're going to eat, it's coming out somehow. Anything you're going to eat, it will come out. You cannot contain in, in inside, it will come out. That's why when John decided to eat that, that scroll, which was with the angel, he ate it. Now, the, he, it was uh, sweet why because knowing new things is sweet for us getting new information is sweet for us getting revelation is sweet for us having experience with jesus is sweet for us but now having a dream is a sweet things for us right when god gave you a dream but now after you tasted you took it it's going to your stomach and after it's going to your stomach, but in your stomach is bitter. In another word, you cannot keep it in. You have to do something with it. Now, John had to prophesy. Why? Because in his stomach, it was bitter. That's a spiritual principle. Anything you're taking from God, is it will be sweet for your mouth. You will enjoy to have it. But if you try to keep it, if you're not sharing it, you feel strange. Isn't happened that to you already? You have a revelation and you felt like if I cannot share with somebody, I'm going, I'm going to go mad. I, I just feel I have to share with somebody. So you called somebody, listen, God spoke to me. I understood this and this and this. And you know, that's how we are. Because, because uh, everything you eating, everything you getting from heaven, you know it's sweet for you you enjoying but if you cannot load off it if you cannot speak it out it will it will be bitter for you so it has to come out as well 
uh, let me let me prove you this uh, in a book of Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah said, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart as I burning fire. And, and uh, when I when I start to be quiet, uh, I felt like I'm burning like a fire in my bones and I'm trying to ignore it. I'm trying to hold it back not to speak but i cannot contain it so i had to speak i had to prophesy again so jeremiah had word from god and he tried to contain try to keep quiet but jeremiah said i find something like like burning in my heart in my bones i cannot be quiet i had to prophesy why because anything you're hearing from god you're hearing for sharing it that's why in the book of Daniel, Daniel had to be instructed not to share certain things because naturally, uh, by nature, we would share. That's why angels had to say, Daniel, you are not allowed to share this because the angel knew by nature Daniel would pick up his iPhone and call uh, Shibnak and, and uh, maybe the king of Nabakudnos and say, listen, Nabakudnos, I just have this vision. I have to tell you what happened to me. That's our nature, which is great, but because this is how we evang evangelize. This is how we call people to the meeting. By the way, did you call somebody to this meeting? Did you share that, listen, I'm going to the 300 and I'm going to hear something. Why don't you come with me? Because, you know, you have this great skill to invite people to share great things with other people. That's how God using us to, to, uh, to evangelize and bring new souls to the 300. So if you didn't, let me just rebuke you and go. And next time when you come, bring your neighbor, bring your work colleague. And after this session finish, call somebody and say, listen, I just heard this teaching. It's mind blowing because that's how we build up and we build up with reason when the when the woman with the, in a in a world uh, met with jesus and jesus said oh you have no husband you know who you with is not your husband he was running to the village and was shouting i met with the prophet now everybody started to believe uh, because what she said because that's our nature if something happening we sharing something happening we sharing and this is a good thing, by the way. So what I'm saying, may the Lord give you that shouting mouth to share how good was today, 300. And may you bring somebody to the meeting because that would please God. That would please God, absolutely. Don't be ashamed to say, oh, I'm, I'm attending with 300. And you know, some. don't be shame of the Christ. Don't be shame to invite people. Don't be shame. Don't invite them to a hamburger for a coffee. Invite them for a spiritual, eternal food that can save their life. A coffee cannot save their life. If you like somebody, if you really want to do good with somebody invite to the meeting now this uh, guy jeremiah had something in him and he cannot kept it in because he had to share it and that's how the book of jeremiah birth that's why we have book of jeremiah but as i said uh, even john in the book of revelation he was eating the scroll and as he was eating, it was sweet, good experience. In his stomach, he couldn't handle it, so he had to prophesy. Now, Satan learned this method. He knew everything you're going to eat is going to sweet to your mouth because it's new. Because it's tasting as you never felt before. But after you have in your mouth, Satan know the next step. It goes to your stomach, going to affect your body, your feelings, your soul, your brain, and you're going to speak it out somewhere. You're going, it's, it's somehow going to come out. Because every food that you eat, with, with the food that you eat, two things happening. The first things you're you're going to your stomach and your stomach taking out the good things, do a selection and give you energy. 
That's the first things. The second things, so you just go to the toilet and let it out. But anything you're taking in is somehow coming out. It somehow goes to your body and, and you, you will going to give back. Now, uh, when Satan studied us and find out this is how we are, he started to feed us. And in this vision, I saw a Satan standing and having scrolls and having, having books in his hand. And he's inviting us to eat. Same way as the angel was inviting John, same way now Satan and demonic spirit inviting us to eat their own food. Eat from social media, eat from television, eat from a, a advertisement, eat, eat and eat. Because the enemy knew if you eat something is going to affect you. There is no way that you eat something and doesn't make any change inside you. Every food will change you what you eat, uh, even from, from, the, uh, from, the, from the angel or from the demonic spirit. But you're going to eat. Now, in Luke 6, Jesus is saying something very important. For there is no good tree which produce bad fruits, nor, on the other hand, a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. So Jesus is saying, if you are a tree, as we are a tree, either a good or either a bad. Now, the good tree won't produce bad fruit. And he says, the, the bad tree cannot produce good fruits. And in verse, uh, this is Luke's, uh, Luke uh, 6, 44. He says, for every tree is identified by its own fruits. So what is identifying you? Your fruits. If you have good fruits, then you are a good tree. If you have bad fruit, fruit, fruits, then you are a bad tree. Now, Luke uh, 45 says, 645, a good man out of his good treasure of his heart bring forth which is good. An evil man out of, of the evil, uh, out of the heart brings out evil things. And finally, Jesus giving us the revelation because for his mouth speaks from what is filled in his heart. So Jesus giving this parable to us and saying, listen, you are either a good tree or a bad tree. And the decision who you are is made on which kind of fruits you produce. You produce good or bad and how we can see this is the spiritual things but how you can see in the natural that you have a good fruits or a bad fruits verse 45 said by your speaking because uh, uh, what is in your heart what is overflow uh, in your heart is going to come out mm -hmm. on your mouth so whatever is in your heart with uh, that will it, that will come out to your mouth. If in your hearts there are, there are good things, you're going to speak good things. If your hearts overflow with bad things, you're going to speak bad things. There is no third option. There is no miracle. That's the two option. So when you're asking the Lord, Lord, who, I, who am I? Am I a good tree? Am I a bad tree? Bad uh, tree? Uh, which kind of Christian am I? Where I'm, where, how, how big I am in the spirit? Or wh what is my stage? All you have to do, just think back on your day and meditate. What did I speak today? How did I speak today? Was it good or was it bad? Did I speak by angriness? Did I did I uh, uh, speak uh, jealousy? Did I did I swear? Did I or was was I praising, praying, prophesying? Because these are the fruits which identifies you. Because Jesus said, all these spiritual things, which kind of tree you are, which kind of fruits you have, these all spiritual things, but 
to be able to identify in the earth all you need to do just listen the person how the person speaks and by his speaking you can judge what is in the person's heart so if you want to know where you are just just think about what did you say today how did you speak today because that's who you are as you speak what you're saying that's identifying you according to luke 6. now what is identifying you what is in your heart because jesus says the heart is uh, inside us overflows and when the heart is overflows your mouth is going to speak why are you speaking because your because your heart is overflows if your heart doesn't overflow with something you'll be quiet but jesus says when the heart is overflows verse 45 when your heart is overflows your mouth start to speak and when your heart is overflows and you're speaking we can judge is it a good fruit or an or a bad fruit we can judge is it a good tree or a bad tree but you cannot be quiet if your heart is overflows now for you to, for your heart to be in a position of overflowing you have to feel it if you not feel your heart you'll be quiet because you have nothing to speak but if you feel your heart your heart going to overflow after the overflowing you're going to speak and what you're saying it will tell us either your good or battery now as i said to you the vision is and the enemy the the enemy of the uh, 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 so satan and demonic spirits and and the lord is actually try, both of them they try to feed us because if you eat uh, scriptures if you eat a uh, uh, scroll from the angel you're going to prophesy but if you eat scroll and books from the enemy you're going to overflow and speak with 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 bad fruits your your your, your speech is going to be changed because your heart is overflowing with something which is not holy so in this vision i saw how much the enemy tried to feed you try to bring you and give you information new things which is sweet to your mouth because you like we like new things we like hearing new things we like seeing new things goes to goes to our mind from our mind goes to our heart our heart is overflowing and you don't know why you are shouting and you don't know why you are angry and the reason why you are angry and the reason why you have bad thoughts and bad speech and you're saying things what you what you would say i would never say this again because you were eating the scroll the enemy was able to feed you and when the enemy is feeding you of course as i said your heart is at one point going to overflow and that overflow is hearable overflow is hearable when jesus said the heart is overflow that is hearable whatever is your heart and is overflow we're going to hear that maybe not here in the meeting but maybe uh, when you when you are with your friend or maybe when you are with your child maybe when you are with your husband you're suddenly going to speak things which even going to shock you why because your heart is overflowed and you cannot control why because it's bitter in your stomach you cannot keep it in yeah uh, prophet mm -hmm. Jer prophet jeremiah said i tried to keep in what i ate but i cannot thanks god i ate scrolls thanks god i ate the word of god so i'm prophesying but what happening if you ate the book of satan what happening if you ate the book of uh, the scroll of the demons you're going to prophesy you're going to speak you're going to swear you're going to be angry you're just going to speak anything but not good fruits and the enemy was able to deceive eve in the garden right and it was able to take out uh, her 
uh, from the will of God. How he 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 wrapped it so nice his trick. Now the enemy does the same. He is wrapping it so nice on social media. The things which are actually disgusting. Eve, Eve didn't realize I'm speaking and I'm listening the most disgusting being on the earth, which is Satan. Eve didn't realize I am actually engaging with somebody who's a killer. Eve didn't realize I'm actually uh, uh, getting conversation, relationship with somebody who's who's actually hated by God. Now, the same thing Satan does. Don't think Satan is uh, 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 not doing today. He does. And you think you actually engaging on social media with a sweet person or an innocent video. But that's what Eve was thinking exactly. He thought, I'm just speaking with an animal who looks like the, the others. Maybe on that time, I don't know, every animal were able to speak. I don't know were they able to communicate or not each of them. I don't want to be like super wise. But for sure, this snake was able to speak. And Eve thought speaking with the snake doesn't make me a bad person. Stick, speaking with the snake doesn't make me a sinner, right? And to be honest, speaking with the, with the snake doesn't make her sinner. But the side effect of his of that speaking made her a sinner. How? Because when you're engaging the enemy, as I said, the first thing is happening to you, you, you're letting in to judge everything. So when you speak with the enemy, when you engage with the enemy, you actually have a conversation. But as I said, uh, we are philosopher uh, Osamuda, all the things what we're speaking is goes to our mind. So we have to judge. Now, Eve, as was speaking to to the snake which 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 looked okay which looked acceptable which doesn't look sinful god wasn't angry with that and god uh, uh, god didn't came to kill uh, the snake or eve so eve thought okay that's okay let me just speak to him he's nice actually he doesn't say anything he's just questioning me he's just telling me some new thing things about that tree which I didn't know before, and he was engaging, listening, and suddenly at one point he did something, suddenly his, her hand started to move, and he didn't understand why, because he didn't understand my brain actually is uh, 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 guiding my hand now to move because the information what I let in, the, those fruits, those uh, scroll what I ate from Satan is made me a doer. Because everything you eat, everything you take in, it makes you do a doer. It's make you a doer, everything you eat, everything you listen. So, Eve was listening Satan, speaking with him now that make him a doer. Don't you think the enemy is working exactly in the same way? The enemy engaging us through social media, through newses, through things, and you don't know why, but the next things you see, you, you, you're getting your hand for the fruits, which is forbidden. The next thing you see, something in manifesting you, which goes against God. Why? Because you engage with the enemy. How did you engage? If you would ask Eve, where, where did I engage? Maybe, uh, uh, oh, of course, uh, she would know when, when it's been revealed, everything. But when, he had, when she had a conversation, he did not realize I'm speaking with the enemy. I'm eating the scroll of the enemy. But because that's how good Satan is to deceive us. Now, having a social media without filters, you know, and scrolling uh, three, four hours a day, I'm not saying you cannot have, I'm saying scrolling three, four hours a day, it actually feeds you and doesn't look sinful. But it's affecting your life and you suddenly start to behave differently, start to speak differently. And that's the problem. And you don't understand why you're speaking and why you're engaging differently, why, why you're behaving differently. Because you ate, but the enemy offered for you. Mm -hmm. 
So I had these two vision and the conclusion is I'm not saying we we because we cannot step out from this world we living in this world but we have to set up filters we cannot eat everything you have to be able to discern okay i'm okay to watch this i'm okay to not not to take this i will eat this i will refuse that because if not everything we're going to uh, so the enemy will try to feed us and if we not careful we're going to just eat it eat it and you don't know why you're behaving strange you're behaving change, strange because you ate foreign food you ate the scroll which wasn't from the angel but from demon mm. and again if you would see clearly that that's a scroll for a demon you would never touch but Satan is the master of, of how to deceive us, so he's able to make it look nice, make it look innocent, so we are taking it. Because if I would tell you, would you mind to eat this food, it's uh, already two weeks old and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's smelling already, you, you wouldn't eat for sure. But if I would uh, do for you a nice meal and put some little bit of poison inside, you would eat it. That's how the enemy does with us. He's tried to feed us. So uh, what we have to do, we have to pray and say, Lord, give me a clear heart. Give me a pure heart. Lord, help me to discern what, which kind of food I'm taking in. Help me to discern and, and make, it, make me understand uh, that I'm built to study. I am built to learn. I cannot stop learning. You cannot stop learning, by the way. So even when you scroll your phone, you're still learning new information. Even when you're watching television, you're still learning new information. You never can stop learn. Maybe you're not realizing, but you continuously, every single day, you learn something new. Every single day, day your brain is uh, having some new information. So you're learning, learning, and learning. And, and Satan tried to educate us, try to uh, give his food to us. So we're learning and growing strange, evil. But if we ate the scroll from the hand of God, we're learning and we're going to grow and you're going to prophesy as Jeremiah, you're going to prophesy as, as John. Mm. Let me just pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying by these two visions what I had, Lord. Let us uh, understand the deepness of this vision. Let us understand the secrets of this vision, Jesus. Because what you're saying, Lord, you saw in the spiritual realm that the enemy is trying to copy, try to, try to manipulate us and giving us a scroll, giving us a book to eat. So we will not be able to contain in our stomach, but we're going to speak out. And Lord, we don't want to speak out useless things. We don't want to speak out rotten things. Lord, we want to speak out which is holy, we want to prophesy, we want to be your mouth, Lord, and we don't want to be the mouth of the enemy. So, Lord, please bless us and, and help us to filter what we're going to eat, what we're going to take in, and we're going to refuse in the name of Jesus the food of the enemy. And Lord, give us the vision when next time we're going to see the enemies try to feed us, so we should block and we should refuse. Because even Daniel said, I'm not going to eat from the king of the, uh, uh, from the, the food of the king, Lord. So he was able to discern, I'm not going to eat because that is going to affect me. So Lord, I'm asking for this wisdom and asking the Holy Spirit to bring us more deep in this revelation. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Because we need holiness, Lord. We need, Lord, strength, and strength is coming from your word. And if, you, if we're eating anything else but not your word, strength will not come to our life. Spiritual trends, strength will not come to our life. So, Lord, I'm praying 
that we should have the right food we should eat the right scroll from your angel from your holy spirit lord not from the enemy and lord please holy spirit remind us during the day that we sh we must filter what we're going to eat in the name of jesus i prayed amen and amen uh do you want to say anything uh andra Okay, so uh, uh, I hope this teaching blessed you. And um, I just passed the uh, word to my wife. Amen and amen. And um, I just wanted to share with you also because um, what uh, Apostle Peter has shared is um, today the Lord has really spoke to me uh, in another level too. Um, and what he showed me, it's really it's very much like the same what Apostle really have unpacked and already talked about. But I just want to tell you that um, it's really interesting that this age, we, we, we have a new currency. And this new currency is really your attention. And, you know, we need a currency when there is an exchange going on. So the, the currency is used for exchange, which means that you... You give something, and in return, you get something. And and your your what the enemy uses as a as a currency, it's your attention. So very interesting because it's enough your attention to bring into return something from the enemy. So when I saw that, I actually had a vision as as apostle said when you are going and entering into uh, social media platforms and when you just give your attention to something which means you really just give your eyes you give a, a glimpse you give your mind your vision into something that's a currency for the enemy to give you something in return so you can't go and watch something and not receiving something at the same time so an exchange always used uh, a currency always used but when there is an exchange so in this vision i actually understood that uh eve in the garden needed to only give a little attention to the enemy because the enemy knew the bible says the serpent was more subtle and more cunning than any other beast in the garden. Can you imagine? The Bible says that the serpent was way more, 100 times smarter, cunning, and subtler than any other beast, which means he knew if I only have at least Eve attention for a minute, I know I I know already what to say, what to say for her, what to show for her, to be able to get her attention more deeply. So it was enough for Eve to step for a minute, which means like when you scroll and just stop for a minute, it's enough. it was enough for the serpent to get that attention and sell something to Eve. And then I saw in this vision that actually why the Bible says that the enemy was very uh, cunning and more smartened than any other beast in the garden because he was able to sell something to Eve that contains death. God clearly gave an instruction to Eve that you do not eat from that tree because when you eat, you're going to die. And how cunning and how smart was the enemy to able to convince Eve that I'm going to give you something that you don't have to pay the price for. That I'm, and you know, the and what the enemy does to you is selling you something and it tells you to free. It's free. So you can take it. You won't pay the price for it. And the, pi and the price for it, what you pay, actually should be debt. Because when you sin and disobey, disobedience brings death into your life. And actually what the enemy said, no, 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 Eve, that's not true. What I give and what I offer to you, it's free. 
I can give it to you and you're not going to pay the price for it. Why do we know that he offered this to Adam, um, to Eve, that you're not going to pay the price for it? Because he says clearly, you will surely not die. Actually, the enemy said, Eve, what I, I give you, what I offer you, you're surely not going to have to pay the price for it. I give it to you freely. You will not pay the price, which means the enemy is trying to make you believe that simply scrolling on Instagram, you will not pay the price. You are not going to pay the price. And you know, the very bad thing about it, that Eve said to the serpent that, you know, the Lord told me if I even touch the fruit, I will die. Now, God never said that if you're going to touch it, you will die. It. He said, when you're going to eat it, you will die. It. So imagine Eve touching the fruit and realizing that she actually, nothing happened. I didn't pay the price. Oh my God, I actually didn't die. Nothing has changed. So I touched it and what actually it registered to my mind, Eve was adding things to what God didn't say. So actually, because she realized she didn't die from touching the fruit, she went further. Because now she said, oh my God, maybe the serpent said it right. I will actually not pay the price, but maybe you are right. Because actually I touched it. I, I, I touched it and I didn't feel anything that has shifted yet. Nothing, nothing strange happened. And it's actually good for the eyes. It's good for the knowledge. So I might should buy it for it because... What I thought God says, it's not true. The serpent said it right. The death doesn't, didn't happen. So she eats it and that starts happening, but not realizing that, that already by watching it, that has already entered inside her. The process of that has already started. So what I'm trying to say to you that anytime you go and watch something, uh, you can easily switch your Lord. Because as soon as Eve gave foot place to the evil one and she gave attention to the evil one, that was the first step leading onto a road that actually the end was switching a Lord over her life. See, she was switching the Lord because as soon as she disobeyed God and she obeyed the evil one she made lord over her life that's why christ had to come so uh i saw that the enemy is trying to make a covenant through your eyes and in this vision i saw people taking out their own eyes and offering it to the evil one and then i saw actually taking their own eyes out and giving into the devil hands and this is how we make covenant with the devil today through social media the greatest platform that the enemy uses today to make covenant with people only by scrolling and giving your attention is through is through instagram it's through tiktok so these are the platforms so what what shall we do you have to be very intentional when you go into those platforms that is why i said into the beginning you're either going to use or the Instagram going to use you. You're either going to be used these platforms or they're going to use you. So it's very drastic when we say that actually God give me, um, Eve giving only a one minute attention to the evil one end up to a road that switched a Lord over her life. And actually... What the enemy, you know, if you saw, have you ever met a, a, a person who can sell anything good, which is actually rubbish, but you bought it. Have you ever been trapped by some something that you saw an advertisement, something that you went into a shopping center, no intention to buy a fruit mixer, but you end up coming out from that uh, shopping center, buying a fruit mixer, what you never intended, but because the person has such a charisma, such a, a such a spoke into a in the person mouth that convinced you to buy something that you never intended to buy this is what happened with eve she was never intended to buy that 
but the enemy is so good to sell you something that contains death, that contains evil, and you were never intentionally wanted to buy it. So if I could describe the enemy in today's language is a, a best marketing person in the world. The evil one is the best marketing person, the, mar the best selling person today. And that's why advertise, advertisement and social media is sometimes very evil because we sell things that actually contains evil. And the evil one is so good at selling something that you God never intended for you to have. Have you ever thought about it? That actually you have today the power to see someone personal life. Social media give you uh, opportunity to see Apostle Tommy personal life. Yes, you might think that's how powerful it is, but actually if you are not aware, you watch somebody's personal life and think, oh my God, they just been on another holiday how bad my life it is, you know, I haven't been on a holiday for two, three years, you know, this man is so nice to their wife, they're just bringing a flower, because they are capturing the most nice part, but have you ever, have you ever seen on social media, capturing a wife, something, how unrespectfully their husband is speaking to them, they're not, they not capturing the bad part, so you only see the good part, and you start thinking that your life is so bad and their life is so better, which means you start desiring someone else's life. And you know how bad that is, that you start desiring someone else's uh, life. That is why Job said, I made a covenant with my own eyes so that I don't look for woman who is not designed for me, who is not mine. Which means you see too many things that is not yours. And if you see too many things that is not yours, if you, if you see lives, if you see inside lives that is not desired by God for you to have it, mm -hmm. then you actually start desiring things that is not intended for you. That is why it's easy to desire someone else's wife or someone else's husband or someone else's life or someone else's car or someone else's uh, uh, business because you got the insight to it that's why i also don't really think i'm, I'm not um fun of actually making my personal life open to the to the social media and open to others why would I tempt you with my life? Maybe you are having a luck in that area of having a, uh, you know, when you, uh, the Bible says when you are uh, seeing other people's life going well and yours is not, it's, it's even a good thing for you to see. It makes your life even more bitter. So why I would tempt you to see that I, everything is good in my life and your life is nothing. Why I would paint for you a picture that in my life, life is everything is good and in your life is nothing good. So I think we don't understand even the good things, even the people that you follow that is actually you believe that is not harmful. It's actually harmful when you see somebody have a beautiful house and everything that is in that house is spotless. And before your life was okay, now you saw that woman that actually wake up every morning uh, like a beautiful flower and then the husband is going to greet her. And now you have desires in your heart that it wasn't there before. It wasn't bothering you that your carpet wasn't so beautiful than before but now because you saw it it's bothering you so what i want to say is social media on its own without being intentional is the greatest platform for the enemy to actually sell you something that contains death something that contains evil is vanity and people who goes after vanity become unfruitful and let let me say what is vanity vanity is 
putting pressure on how your cupboard look like. Vanity is putting pressure on or emphasizing is how your cupboard or uh, uh, how your wardrobe is uh, actually uh, organized. Put vanity is when you're looking through and scrolling to things that makes you so emphasize that actually I should dress in Gucci and things because that makes me more valuable today. If I have a Gucci, it makes me more valuable because that means I can afford it. And if I can afford it, that means I'm on the ladder of this. These are in the eyes of the Lord a vanity. And when we go after vanity, we become so unfruitful and we become running after things of vanity and we and and we become so unfruitful so i just wanted to share you this and add to what apostle peter has shared because what you eat you're going to prophesy whether you become a prophet of light or whether you become a prophet of darkness but the end road is you either way you're going to prophesy and prophesy means you become a spokesperson simply a spokesperson we make a big good deal out of it oh who is prophet and who is not let me tell you all of you are prophets in one way in some way all of you are prophets because you are a spokesperson of something that you have eaten the whole day you become a spokesperson of a restaurant when you start uh, telling your friends oh you know i have been in that italian restaurant it is amazing i think you should go and visit you become a spokesperson person you started to advertise that italian res- restaurant without paying they are paying you they're not paying you but they are already you are already advertising it a prophet means a spoke person on behalf of something or an institution or god or 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 the evil so it becomes bitter in your belly that's mean you have to let it out so you become a spokesperson you can become a spokesperson of the evil one. So that's why it's so important what you take in. So I just wanted to share this with you to emphasize on how important what you take in, how important what you give your attention to, what you give your eyes to, what you give to even just a one minute standby change the whole life of Adam and Eve just getting into a conversation, just stepping by. It's changed the whole things. Oh, we say, we always emphasize, oh, actually, it was the bite. No, the bite was, it's just the last resort. But how it is started is the important. Because if if Eve says in the first minute, this snake starts speaking to him and she turns against the snake and starts rebuking it or just pass away this has not happened but because she started to engage because she gave attention to it it was done he was too smart you know don't think you are smarter than the evil don't think you are too cunning that you can stop it that you can stop by touching it not realizing that but it was enough for you to get engaged and that process already started in your life so father in the name of jesus i just release these people and father give to us an intentional mind and an intentional way of living lord because you are an intentional god everything that we do it has to be intentional we we, we can't become a vanity of vessels lord because the enemy also wants to use every vessels lord and then i see in the potter's house there are many vessels lord and as your hands comes onto these vessels you want to form us but when we fill ourselves with vanity lord we will be given into the hands of the entity uh, um, a- enemy to be used lord because when we have vanity we have unfruitfulness lord and you want to see fruit lord and you want to see fruit over our life so father in the name of jesus forgive us that we gave ourselves as a vessel to the things of which full of vanity to the things that it it is which is full of evil lord father cleanse us lord give us 
understanding or what happened when we stop for a second and we get engaged for the enemy remind us of this teaching lord that we do not stop by remind us lord that everything that we eat we're going to start prophesying remind us that even the enemy wants to feed us with scrolls of evil one remind us lord when we stop by uh, uh, in the night lord when we tempted by the evil one lord remind us of this teaching do not stop by lord do not give our intention lord do not give our attention and do not give our eyes to the enemy because the eyes is the window lord and the enemy doesn't want to come through the door the enemy wants to come through the window lord he used a different door lord he wants to use the window lord so father in the name of jesus i prophesy over each of them lord let them be a prophet of light. Let them be a prophet of God, but not but not prophet of the Belial, Lord. Not the prophet of Baal. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, cleanse us. And Lord, give us a heart that is clean in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Bless you, people of God. See you on Sunday service. And eat these scrolls and get and let inside into your spirit so may you start prophesying to people about this teaching amen and amen, amen. amen. Bye, bye bye bless you get rich bye, bye. 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 bye.